In this week's video we're going to take a look at this motherboard right here. I bought this a couple of months ago, listed as faulty Dell Latitude 7280 series motherboard Intel Core i5-6200U CPU product number LAE122P for parts are not working. Let's scan it in, bring some power to the board and see what's wrong with it. And this is my scanned image of the motherboard. Now I don't know what exactly is wrong with this board, it is described as just being faulty. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring power to the board. I don't have the original power adapter for this, so I'm going to show you how I use my DC power supply to inject power at the DC in jack. Zoomed in on our DC in jack and as you can see we have 5 pins, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So how do we know where to inject our positive DC voltage? I've confirmed on the schematic that pin 2 is where we need to inject our positive DC voltage but even if I didn't have a schematic you can see that this pin is connected to this inductor and we have a similar configuration to what we've seen on the other Dells. An inductor, a first MOSFET, a second MOSFET and presumably somewhere through those vias we will find a current sense resistor. So to bring power to this motherboard I introduce my DC power supply, I connect my black wire to ground, I connect my red wire to the inductor PL4, it was just easier to solder it directly onto this inductor than to solder it to pin 2. I set the voltage for 19.5 volts and when I switched it on it started drawing 11 milliamps. The current draw of 11 milliamps is in line with what we would expect a motherboard to draw when it's plugged in but not powered on yet. So what I'm going to do next is get my multimeter in volts DC and follow that 19 volts as it enters the system. So let's start taking some measurements then. So as we know we are injecting 19.5 volts through this wire and onto this inductor so I'm going to start by measuring on the other side of the inductor. So let's introduce our multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range and I'm going to place my black probe to ground and we're going to take a measurement on the other side of this inductor. And when I place my red probe to the inner side of the inductor, I find that it measures 19.50 volts. Having passed through the inductor, our 19.5 volts should then come along this track down here onto this MOSFET. If we mark out the pins of this MOSFET, which is a P-channel MOSFET, we can see that we have a gate pin here. So in order for this P-channel MOSFET to be switched on, that gate pin should be low. So let's take a measurement at the gate and see what we're measuring. At the gate pin I'm measuring 1.75 volts, so that signal should switch the MOSFET on and we should be getting our 19.5 volts at the drain pins also. And at the drain pins of that first MOSFET I take a voltage measurement and I confirm that our 19.5 volts is making it through from our source pins to our drain pins. Our 19.5 volts then comes through onto the drain pins of a second P-channel MOSFET. So similar to the first one, we should expect the gate voltage here to be low in order to switch this MOSFET on and allow our 19.5 volts through from our drain pins to our source pins. So let's check the voltage on the gate. Measuring very carefully at the gate pin of that second MOSFET, I find that it measures 1.75 volts. And the last measurement we want to take in this section is at the source pins of this second MOSFET. So I place my red probe to any one of the three source pins and I find that it measures 19.50. So everything looks good up to this point, but where does our 19.5 volts go next? Well if we look at the schematic we see that this laptop employs an Intercell 88738 and this is a BookBoost NVDC battery charger. If we look at the sample schematic for this, we can see that the input voltage first comes to this ISL88738 and then it's regulated down to a lower VSYS voltage and that VSYS is then sent down to all of the secondary circuits and the lower voltages are then derived from that VSYS voltage. So let's take a closer look at that IC. On the other side of the board, I found PU901 which is our Intercell 88738H NVDC charger. As you can see this IC is very very small but I need to carry out some voltage measurements. I need to measure first of all and confirm that we're getting our 19.5 volts on the input to this ISL88738. We can measure that on one of the pins that is connected to the current sense resistor. So CSIN is a good place to measure to make sure we're getting 19.5 volts. The output VSYS from this IC we can measure at the VSYS pin which is connected to the output right here. So where do we even start with trying to find those pins to measure the voltages? Well first of all I want to zoom in a little bit more 
and then I want to mark out all the pins on it. With my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range I place my black probe to ground and with my red probe I carefully place it against pin 14 and there I measure 19.50 volts so we're getting the correct input voltage. 19 is the AC in pin and if we check our schematic we can see that this is where our AC in pin is connected here. So we have our 19.5 volts SDC in and then a voltage divider circuit. The AC in pin is measured between those two resistors. So all we need to do is feed those values into an online voltage divider calculator and we can find out what we should be expecting at the AC in pin. Our online voltage divider calculator from DigiKey tells me that if we have our voltage 19.5, our R1 442 kilo ohms, our second resistance 100 kilo ohms, the output should be 3.59 volts. And when I measure a pin 19, I find that it measures 3.52 volts. So that's close enough to the value. That signal is good. The next measurement I want to take is a pin number 3 which is Vsys. So I place my red probe carefully to pin number 3 and I find that it measures 13.50 volts. So this is correct. So what do we know at this point? Well first of all we know that our AC in signal is correct. We also know that our CSIN is measuring 19.5 volts so we're getting our 19.5 volts as an input to this IC. The output Vsys we are measuring at 13.50 volts so this is the main power rail that's going to be sent down to all of our secondary circuits and this is correct. Since we've established that our Vsys 13.5 volt power rail is present the next thing to do is to confirm if our always on voltages are present. I've searched the schematic and I found that PU100 is responsible for generating our 3.3 volts always on power. So let's find that and see if we're getting our 3.3 volts always on. I located PU100 on the other side of the board. It's a 20 pin IC and I've marked in the pins on this. So what are we looking for with this IC? Well we have four input pins here and we should be measuring an input voltage on this. And once this has an input voltage it then should be generating an LDO 3.3 on this pin 17 here. Measuring in volts DC in a 20 volt range once again, I place my black probe to ground and my red probe to the input pins and I find that it measures 13.50 volts. So this is our Vsys power rail which is now serving as the input to PU100. So our input voltage is good but are we getting our LDO output? Well, placing my red probe very carefully to pin 17 I find that we measure 3.39 volts. So our LDO 3.3 volts is also working. I also measured a higher current output on pin 19 and 20 and I found that that measured 3.39 volts also. I know we've had this query before as to whether both the LDO and the higher current output should be present on these ICs when the laptop is essentially in standby mode. Well for this laptop even though the laptop is powered off, both the LDO and the higher current output, 3.3 volts, are present. Next I wanted to check the bias IC. So again measuring in volts DC, I place my black probe to pin 4 which is ground and my red probe to pin 8 which is the input. And I found that that was also measuring 3.39 volts. So we're getting the correct voltage on the bias IC. So at this point we've got our main 13.5 volt power rail, we have our LDO 3.3 volts, we have our 3.3 volts going to our bias. So I was struggling to find any fault with this. I thought the next best step would be to take diode bone readings from all of these secondary inductors. So that's what I did next. And these are the diode mode readings with the power off that I took at each of those large secondary inductors. So as you can see, nothing here looks like it is indicative of a short. The lowest reading I got was across PL610 and PL612. These are measuring 0 0.033 volts in diode mode. But this is just because it's a low reading across the CPU. This is not indicative of a short.
Okay, up to this point, I cannot find a fault with this motherboard, so I'm just going to power it on and see what happens. As you can see, I've got it hooked up with my little jumper cables, and it's now drawing 7 milliamps. This board actually does have a power button, so we don't have to jump or anything. And I've connected in a HDMI port to my monitor. So I'm just going to press the power button. Uh, just press the power button. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it's starting to draw 300 milliamps. All screens turn blue. I don't believe it. And this was advertised to me as faulty. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, it's certainly powering on for me now. I mean, what am I meant to do in this situation? Do I bring it back to the guy that sold it and say, you told me it was a faulty laptop, so I'm giving it back to you because it's not as advertised? Um, I don't know. But look, it seems that there was nothing wrong with this board at all. I'm not going to spend any more time on this. The laptop motherboard was advertised as faulty for parts are not working but it's certainly working for me now. I am conscious that maybe you know there was a problem with the power adapter, maybe there was a problem with the RAM that they were using or a problem with the battery charging circuit or something like that. Something that I'm just not seeing now. I plug it in and it boots up straight away. So that's all I got for this week guys. That's a bit frustrating but I can only take whatever I get you know that I purchase on secondhand sites or from local shops. I don't get to dictate how interesting the fault is. Please like and subscribe and if you get any to say put it in the comments below thanks